I think Nick Ocado didn't get what he wanted. He wanted her to come on here and destroy another YouTuber. He just didn't know that that YouTuber was gonna be him. <laughs> hey, what up everyone, Michael B. Petty here. Um, I wanted to just sit here and talk a little bit about my opinions on the Nick Ocado and Stephanie Sue situation. It's 2020, the mukbangers have come to claim the throne of drama in 2020. They have taken it away from the beauty gurus already, the beauty tuber the YouTubers, it's already, it's gone. It's, the, the mukbangers have taken it. I'm honestly not the, that surprised because Oftentimes, when there are communities that thrive and that make a lot of money, there is a lot of toxic individuals that can join said community. I mean, it's just like the beauty community. There's a lot of money involved. Whenever money's involved, people's true selves seem to be released. And for a lot of people, it's not the greatest. I do want to give a little bit of a TLDR about the Nick Ocado, Stephanie Sue situation. It's going to be very brief, very just point by point. I'm not going to go into much detail about who said this, when this was said, blah, blah, blah. So essentially what happened, Nick Ocado went to LA to do a bunch of collabs with people. One of the people he was going to collab with was Stephanie. Um, I believe they did a video with, with Nick, um, Zach Choi, and Stephanie. They did a video with Nick and Stephanie at her home. They were gonna do more videos, but um, along the line, Stephanie began to feel incredibly uncomfortable around him and didn't want to do, didn't want to mess with him anymore, essentially. He got offended. Um, he then proceeded to start DMing his friends or messaging his friends, messaging her, talking in the group chat about her, and then messaging her something completely different. Um, they were out to dinner with his friends and they were mocking um, a phrase that she used in her text to him about why she was canceling on him, about how she was in and out of sleep because she just wasn't feeling well. And he proceeded to take that and run with it and try to dogpile his friends on onto her and make her feel even more like shit, which was like, cool, I guess that's what we do now. Um, um, he went back to wherever he's from, I don't know, I don't care. And um, during that time, she decided to make her video, her first video about how she felt scared of Nick Okada. I believe she even titled the video, Why I'm Scared of Nick Okada. I get it, I can understand why someone would be afraid of someone like Nick Okada. He's incredibly volatile and you don't really know what you're gonna get with him. I know he tries to act like he's like this wuss or whatever because he's he cries because he had to get blood taken, but I think that that's all an act. I think it's a persona that he puts on to try to make people think he's like this empathetic and sincere kind, timid person, but I don't think that's his personality. He's incredibly loud. He says a lot of really shocking and sometimes mean, sometimes critical things of people. Um, he has no, he is not afraid to go toe to toe with people. Um, I mean, look at the whole Veronica Wing situation. He was, he wanted to take her out and that was his end goal at the end of the day was to just take her out because she, she was, so, he was so upset about a copyright claim being taken on a smaller YouTuber, which is interesting considering now that he's friends with Trisha and she went out here and pretty much tried to get a whole channel taken down. Um, he, has, he said boo about that. So I'm, you know, we'll see how that works out. Then he proceeded to make his video where he talked about his side. He mischaracterized a lot of what went down. He exaggerated, cut out, left out. He spoke for other people, which was very interesting to me. I, he, he pretty much put words in either other people's mouths or he mischaracterized their text to him to make her, them to make Stephanie feel like she was the odd man out and that she was going to be isolated by, I guess, the mukbang community. And that didn't work out for him because a lot of those people came forward talking about how this isn't exactly what happened. This isn't exactly how it went down. Um, we're not on your side in this dog. Like Then Stephanie made her newest video, which came out yesterday. And in that video, I just want to give... I just want to give a round of applause for Stephanie. She came across very articulate, very confident, very concise, very just that kind of energy that we should go into 2020 with. And I'm not saying this because I don't like Nifka Kakato. I think if she had done another video where she was very teary and emotional, emotional, I think it wouldn't have held any kind of weight or any kind of conviction in my opinion. But I think this time she got it together. She thought about it. She really went in to just kind of tear apart all the arguments that he was trying to make against her to, to, to reclaim the narrative. And you know, and Stephanie, you did that. You did the damn thing. So kudos to you, girl, kudos to you. She pretty much let all of us know what time it is when it comes to Nick Ocado. And I think a lot of people have felt this way for a long time, but when someone has power like that, and I'm talking about numbers on social media, unfortunately we live in a society now where it's not just money that can 
um, bring you power, it's influence. And influence as in subscriber, view counts, all of that stuff, who you know. And I can understand how it can be intimidating to go after someone like that, especially now that he's been seen with the likes of Trisha and Shane. And, and so you get this assumption that like he's part of the like YouTube elite now because that's who he's around. That's who he chooses to interact with, right? And if you're a nobody, he typically doesn't really give a fuck. I mean, you know, if you don't get the views, then you're poor. I mean, that's what he called Zach and I for um, what we did or whatever, but it, it that's neither here nor there. I think that Nick Akato has never liked Stephanie. I think that he went in there with the intention of making her feel uncomfortable, hopefully trying to get her to say some disparaging things about people that he could take back home, run along with, hold either hold over her head or use it to make a video about her. He tried to get other people involved in that community to isolate her or to talk negatively about her. She tried her hardest to convey originally why she canceled on him and why she chose going forward that she didn't want anything to do to associate with him. And he kept making this play about how because she watches his Instagram stories that she must not feel that scared of him or that, but I don't think that's the case at all. I think she just wanted to know what the fuck this asshole was going to do. And I don't blame her for wanting to watch a little bit of his Instagram stories or see what he's posting because you never know with him. You don't know what kind of crazy shit he's gonna pull out of thin air and claim. Like for all we know, he could have come out saying that like, they tried to gang rape him or something because that's the kind of person that he is and that's the kind of ludicrous behavior that he displays and the dumb stuff that comes out of his mouth. He's, you never know. And so I think she just wanted to keep tabs on like what this person was gonna do because she knew as soon as she canceled on him, it was he was gonna go in. And her intuitions were right. And I think in 2020, we need to, if someone gives you a bad vibe, if, if your intuition is telling you that this is not a good person, listen to it, okay? You don't owe anyone anything, okay? You can withdraw consent at any moment it's not that big of a fucking deal. I, we're eating camera. We're eating on camera. We're eating camera. We're eating on camera. It's not like we're out here trying to cure AIDS, okay? You're on here eating on camera. If I don't want to eat on camera with you, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And considering the fact that the vast majority of your videos are of people being by themselves, eating on camera by themselves, I don't understand why that would be a hard thing. Now, she talks about how she felt incredibly uncomfortable with him taking pictures in, in her house with when she was there, not there. I think that happened. I think that when she came on here and she said, Nick, give me the consent to release the security cam footage so I can show them exactly what you were doing when I wasn't in the room. Why would she say that? I don't. Th I honestly don't think she would go around saying that or saying, hey, I want you to the re to release the, the video recordings of our personal mukbang, the just the two of us, and how you kept goading me and interrogating me about Veronica over and over again, and how I felt uncomfortable, and how I was pretty much paralyzed there in fear because there's a camera on me. Like, I think when she says release the information because I think it would do more harm to his story and his narrative than it would to hers. I believe her. I don't think that she has a reason to lie about that. I don't think that this is in her character to come on here and to mischaracterize or misconstrue things that happened in order to make Nick look bad. Because the real talk is it doesn't take much to do that. I think most people who have critical thinking skills can understand how this dude constantly goes around here and just shock jocks people for no fucking reason. And I think she knew, given the fact of his pattern of behavior in the past about how he would go after people, go after Trisha, other people. And that was honestly to God too, that's the only time I've ever been on Trisha's side with anything was her not wanting to, to film videos with him. You are allowed to do that. You are allowed to say, I don't want to do this anymore. It is okay. Yes, it might suck for the person, but let's not pretend that like he was down and out because of that. It's the most, it's the dumbest thing ever, dude. I, I don't understand. And he kept saying about how he has abandonment issues and he has mental illness issues. And that's why when people cancel on him or they don't do what he wants, that he freaks the fuck out. I do not think that because you've dealt with trauma in your life that you are then allowed to go around inflicting trauma on other people. I don't think that's okay. I don't think mental illness gives you a get out of jail free card for doing and saying whatever the fuck you want. I don't think it's okay. And I think most people feel the same way about that. And when he went down there and he wanted so badly, he wanted so, he, I think he went down there with the intent, with, with especially with Stephanie, is to expose her, make her look stupid, make her look really greedy with her house. I mean, she has a beautiful house. Congratulations, girl. You did it. You saved the money. You made the coin. You got the house that you deserve. <laughs> I don't understand why anyone would be upset with that. Like, so 
I think he went down there with the intent to drive a wedge between her and Veronica. I think he wanted to get more tea. I think he wanted to humiliate Veronica again. And I think he wanted to humiliate Stephanie again at the same time. I think Stephanie's intentions when she was talking about Veronica and wanting to do like a Shane, I hate that like Shane is the like gold standard for like how we're gonna like do conflict resolution on YouTube. But I think that she wanted to do a somewhat kind of docuseries and like literally let's bring, let's have a peace summit. Let's bring all of these people to the table with with their consent and let's talk about what went down and how moving forward we can bury the hatchet and coexist peacefully. We don't have to be friends. We can just move on and go on to the next thing. And it's clear as day that Nick Akato has been holding a grudge against Veronica for I don't know what this girl did to this man. I, I, I've i literally, I've sat back and tried to like figure it out. Like, what is it that, like, I understand she took someone's video down. Maybe she's bitchy at times, but we all are. Um, what did she personally do to, I couldn't, I can't figure it out. I honestly can't figure it out. I don't think that she's that problematic to be real. I think that she's done some questionable things in the past, but nothing that like is that bad. <laughs> so I think that that's what he wanted to do is he wanted to go down there and he wanted to drive a wedge between these two women and it didn't work out for him. And when it stopped working out for him and when Stephanie said, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home, I don't want to play anymore. I'm going to go live on my nice ass, li lay on my nice ass couch and not deal with you anymore. He got highly offended and he got super irate and he wanted to take her down by all means necessary. And that meant going and spinning a narrative to people that don't even know her, <laughs> that like she's this awful person, and then trying to use their opinions as a character, as a character witness, as to to va validating his opinions on Stephanie, which is so bizarre to me. Like in the people he used who were just like like Carly Steele, like really, we're gonna believe Carly Steele, the girl that challenged a 500 pound woman to a hot Cheeto eating contest. That's the person's opinion that we're supposed to take as the gold standard. I mean, it's ridiculous. And I think that he went down there with the intention to humiliate this woman and it didn't work out for him and it's not working out for him. And now he's going home with his tail between his legs. Um, he, he liked to play the whole part about how she's only doing this for views, but the truth is that she's only come out with a couple of videos since then. And he's the one who's been still posting all of these mukbangs over and over again, because he's using the Trisha, Trisha Paytas method where you do some really awful shit and then you're trending. And so you start pumping out a bunch of videos because you want to capitalize on those views and all that stuff. I think that's who he is. That's the kind of person. I think he is view driven. I think he is money driven. I think Stephanie does this. And I think, I think most, like most people, I mean, you obviously want your videos to be seen and you, it's her career or whatever, but I don't think that was her intention. I think she wanted to speak her truth before he was able to come out and spin a narrative about her. I think Nick Ocado didn't get what he wanted. He wanted her to come on here and destroy another YouTuber. He just didn't know that that YouTuber was going to be him. <laughs> and now this is what he gets. And I, I've seen people flip-flopping about, was she right, was he right? She made her video and people were on her side, then he made his video, then people were on his side, and then she made her video again, and now people are back on her side. In 2020, I think we all need to try to be more consistent. I think it's okay to have your perspective or opinion change when you are given new information. I don't think that's, that's fine, okay? I think, I think we can live in a world where both people can be wrong, okay? Where both people can be wrong and both people can be wh white, and both, both people can be right. I think that you have to live in your conviction at some point, and I've never liked Nick, and I'm gonna be full blown honest about this. I've never really liked him. I don't, anyone that's gonna funnel feed people ice cream is fucking weird, especially 400 pound women. Like, it's weird it's bizarre i don't get it it's humiliating to me i think stephanie has no reason to come on here and lie about this person i think that she just was speaking her truth and she wanted it to be out there and i applaud her for that when i watched that second video she came out or that third video now that she came out with about it and she was perfectly okay i thought that was amazing i'm not going to talk about the snapchat a sexual i don't know enough about that to talk about it and it's too heavy for me to really get into um but I think she did a really good job of getting her point out there and getting her point across. And I applaud you for that, Stephanie. And I think it's something that we can, going forward, take that some of that energy that Stephanie exuded in that video and apply it to our lives in many different ways. Because I think it takes a lot of guts to come out here and do something like that. And you did it, girl, you did it. And Nick, I don't know, I would say learn from this, but we know that's not going to happen because you've had ample opportunities in the past to change 
your behavior when it comes to stuff like that and you don't you feel like you're the victim all the time and then therefore you think that that gives you the right to go around victimizing other people that's all i gotta say about that thank you all so much for wa watching remember to like comment subscribe follow me on instagram and twitter at michael b petty and until next time toodles